Early week edition of College Sports Now on Election Day. Appreciate you hanging out with us. Roddy Jones is in the house back from, uh, where were you over the weekend? Arkansas. That's right. Fayette Fish Hole. Fayetteville Part 2. Uh, Trip Heard, the lock doctor, is going to join us in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're doing things a little bit differently today. We had to, behind the curtain, we had to slide the show back a little bit. Your boy was in studio running a basketball game, Roddy, that did not get out, that did not end. Uh, until 2.30 a.m. Eastern Loud. time. Okay, Loud. I did this to myself, as I've told Loud. you before. Uh, check, a check, a check, shepherd check, check. must... Bl- you can't must come on the like show check, check, checking, Trip. Yes, Trip has entered the chat. You his started mic- the show without me? His microphone works. We're like 45 Steven seconds. Steven started the show without you. That's it's okay. That's on you guys then. You're, listen, you're here, and I'm glad that you're here. We will right get middle, to... Where I, I, uh, we will get to Alex Kirshner in about 20 minutes. He is one third of Split Zone Duo, a podcast that I love listening to and uh, I support. So we'll be checking in with him for all things national college football here in about 20 minutes. But we got a lot going on, Roddy, because CFP results come out. The inaugural set of rankings come out tonight. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of other things going on in the in the in the the world. Uh, obviously, the news cycle is going to be kicking it into overdrive tonight. But it's not going to be done tonight, people. It's not going to be done tonight. Listen, I mean, maybe in the wee hours, who knows? Um, it's going to get spicy one way or the other. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about college football, a game, sports. Uh, although I would like to get some CFP predictions from you before we get out of here. Roger Thomas had a phenomenal weekend. Uh, we are officially back. Rodstra went, what do we go, eight and three, making picks? It's very good. It was a Phenomenal. good week. Phenomenal. Absolutely week. had to have it. Tripp had a good week taking uh, taking picks as well, so we'll, we'll get into the week 12 predictions a little bit later in the show. But, Roddy, first and foremost, as I ask you every week, uh, you got to see Ole Miss hang 63 points on that Arkansas. Correct. Good God. Could have been, been a million if they Here's wanted Here's my question that. for you, because Ole Miss has a pretty big game coming up on Saturday in Oxford. Do you buy the Rebs? Depends on what you mean by buy. Like, do I buy them this week in Oxford uh, a lot more than I did? The thing is, Arkansas matched up poorly in the wrong areas. Like, they couldn't block them up front. Georgia will provide much more resistance with that. And then on the other end, they couldn't cover them. Like, they literally could not run as fast as Ole Miss's fast people. Georgia will be better at that. So the thing that if you're an Ole Miss fan that you're encouraged about is you did all this without Trey Harris. You give him another week to recover. Uh, Caden Prescorn, the starting tight end, didn't play, uh, but Daquan Wright had a phenomenal first quarter until Juice Wells took over, which mm-hmm. Juice Wells kind of took over for a half second there, um, which is encouraging. And then Jordan Watkins was the story of the game. Uh, tied an SEC record with reception, uh, receiving touchdowns, second player in SEC history to have 250 receiving yards and five touchdowns. Devontae Smith is the other one. I'm not sure if you've heard of him. The fact that that old that Jackson Dart is playing as well as he is is encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a team that's two fourth down stops away from being undefeated. Those are the good. Uh, the bad is it feels a little bit like a team that plays when it wants to play. It feels a little bit like a team that just played its most complete game, but didn't have to play a full game to play its most complete game. Um, and it feels very much like a team that in the second and fourth quarters is overmatched the first and third quarters are great uh and this feels like it's going to be a fourth a four quarter game and absolutely they're not going to blow georgia out like this is not going to happen so so do i buy the rebels sure uh i think they could be a playoff team with three losses um potentially depends on what happens but but they're a better team than their record and their record's pretty good they only got two losses but that kentucky loss just sticks in your craw lsu too like lsu they had two sure. four downs against well on the love, game listen, time drive i i love that you're out here stumping for old miss i mean lane kiffin's at the podium talking about we're two plays away from being undefeated and they are you are and honestly on college sports now being like mm, old miss is two plays away from being undefeated and look they had like those two plays it's one play in the kentucky game and then one play twice in the LSU game, because they had them fourth and five backed up, and they convert to Mason Taylor, and then they have them fourth and five later on, or fourth and something later on, and Anthony Anderson catches that, pa- or Aaron Anderson catches that pass in the end zone. Like that was a fourth down play to tie the game. So he's not he's not wrong. The thing is, they haven't been able to finish, and so when you can't finish, um, that's an issue. The thing the thing that happened, the thing that peaked up against LSU, like Kentucky, you got to put to the side. They played terrible. Jackson Dart's worst game of the year. 
I can't just that, put I can't just put a game to the side when there's when there's only a nine game sample size, right? No, like I, I mean, have to. Okay. You see what so, I'm saying? So when I say put it to the side, I'm like that. That's an outlier. There's a lot of things that Pope that 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 raised its head in that game mm-hmm. that didn't happen in other games. They didn't play well. Okay. But but if you're talking about analyzing how they're going to play against Georgia, the thing that gave them trouble late against LSU was the fact that they could not touch Garrett Nussmeyer. And they've got a really good front, really good front. But that is a an offensive line in LSU that has allowed, I believe it's still two sacks all year, and both of them were to South Carolina. So they will be able to get more pressure against Carson Brett Beck than they did against Garrett Nussmeyer, which changes the calculus slightly. So, you know, I, and if Carson Beck continues to play poorly, you know, we'll see. I think the secondary is is obviously the issue for Ole Miss. Um, but they're solid. They're really solid on all three. Le- like you watch that team, you're like, damn, how did this team lose two games? Holy hell. I mean, everywhere. You're like, oh, my God. Right. The, running back is probably the one place where they are even top line, not very talented. And, and they're like moderately talented. And now uh, Henry Parrish looks like he's it looked like a pretty severe injury. He left the game with. Yeah, the uh, one of the things you said there, I don't know if it's it's I don't know if it's going to be a three loss Ole Miss team. I don't know if it's going to be a three loss Georgia team. I don't know if it's going to be a three loss LSU or Alabama team, but there will be a three loss SEC team in the playoff. I I I I feel like we are absolutely headed in that direction. The uh, you cannot jam you cannot the make that standings is fascinating. You cannot make that statement definitively. There's too many variables. Well, it won't be Missouri. Okay, it won't be three losses. No, Missouri. but you can't. Again, you you cannot make that statement definitively. I just did. Well, okay. So what if in the conference That's championship it. games, uh, Miami loses and BYU loses as undefeated teams? That throws. That, those are bid stealers. You can't make that a definitive statement. Maybe. Maybe I mean yes, you're right, but don't you feel like with, with you got to find seven teams to fill this field out at some point? Yes. Yeah, so, so I did this yesterday, and I, I know you, we want to talk about games, but we're already in the CFP rankings. No, I mean, like, listen, I you come from a place of um, like you sat in the room and you did the mock committee. Like you're not just I listen. I do a show with Wayne Cook in the middle of the week where we're just throwing darts at the board, you know, and I yeah. enjoy throwing darts at the board. But go ahead, if you've crunched the numbers on this, let's hear it. So, so it's not necessarily crunching the numbers, but but like the committee is not going to be in the business of dropping teams for playing in the championship game. So let's so just say data point. Correct. You can be rewarded, and that's how you're going to get around it. Like if two teams played in the championship game, one won, one lost, and the one below was the one that won, they could jump the one that lost, and technically you're not punishing the team that lost. You're rewarding the team that won. So that's sort of the caveat of how they're going to get a, get around it. But let's play this out. Um, so so obviously ACC is going to get at least one. Big 12 is going to get at least one. If BYU and Miami are undefeated going into that week, there's not going to be that many undefeateds. So let's just say they're six and seven just to, to play whatever. They're safely in. Even if they get jumped by a couple of teams, they're still going to be in. And those two conference champions would get in. So let's just say in this scenario, ACC gets two in, Big 12 gets two in because their champ, their, their undefeated team loses in the conference championship. Group of five is going to get one. Notre Dame is going to get one. That's six spots already. Now you're looking at the Big Ten, which is going to get Ohio State, Oregon, and Indiana in. I feel very confident that that is going to happen at this point. And you're, you've got the Penn State problem. If you've got Ohio State, Oregon, Penn State, and Indiana all with one or less loss, I'm sorry. Like, the SEC, that's, that's, that's four teams. And so now you've got two at-large bids left. And I don't even think I counted the, the – the, the um or you've got you've got the champion in the at large. I don't know. Did I count the SEC champ? I well, I counted the Big Ten champ in there. I haven't counted the SEC champ. So so you're left with one SEC champ and one at large, or maybe you're having the conversation of like a Penn State or an Indiana with one loss. Those losses would both come to Ohio State, and and you're going to compare that to three loss LSU. No, you're comparing that to two loss whoever. You're comparing that to the SEC championship loser like. That's where that comp is going to come. So th- there is a scenario that could throw chaos into this whole thing. Yes. I, I don't think it's likely, but I do think if you're the SEC, you are praying for chalk. You have to have chalk. 
That means ACC, Miami wins it. Big 12, BYU wins it. Group of five, that's obviously going to get in. Notre Dame could win or lose. You're hoping for Notre Dame to lose, so maybe that chalk you're not hoping for. But every like in the Big 12 and the ACC, you are hoping for chalk. And if that scenario comes true, then I think you're getting four teams in from the SEC and four in from the Big 10. But if anything weird happens, those four for the from the Big 10 feels a lot more secure than the four that you could get from the SEC. Okay, that's a, that's a solid argument. I, I, I see no issues with that. Still four weeks left in the regular season, though. And as yeah. we learned this past Saturday, like the Big 12 was just minding its business. It was just going about its day-to-day life. And then chaos happened, you know? That, then before you know it, you lose at Houston. Before you know it, you're losing at home to Texas Tech. Like, stuff happens. Yeah. More stuff like that will happen over the next couple of weeks. Fascinating race in the Big 12. I kind of felt like at some point the Big 12 was going to Big 12. Um, it did on Saturday. It did. It did hard. And look, the, the 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 Houston loss for Kansas State, like that is a that is a that's an awful loss. You can't have that, especially up, what were they up 19 in the fourth quarter? Avery Johnson throwing picks like it's his job. Uh, it wasn't 19 in the fourth quarter. It was 19. Uh, no. They were up. I think the final was like 17, 14 or something. No, it was 24, 19. I can't remember what they were up, but they were up. They were up a lot in the in the second half <laughs> and even in the fourth quarter. But but when you when you look at at that loss, like that is a, a damning loss. And now you're in a situation where Colorado's sitting out there just chilling. And they got a big game against Texas Tech on the road this week. Um, but if Iowa State and Colorado both went out, mm-hmm. do you realize where we're gonna get? We're going to get the, we're going to get in the tiebreaker there? scenarios, which so is... so the first tiebreaker is head to head. These two teams did not play each other. So you go to the second tiebreaker um, record against common opponents. Well, the common opponents for Colorado and Iowa State are Kansas State, which Colorado lost to and Iowa State in this scenario would have beaten Utah, Cincinnati, Texas Tech, which in this scenario, Iowa State just lost to Colorado would have beaten Uh-oh. Kansas and UCF. All right. So record against common opponents is the same. Then you move to the second to the next tiebreaker. So you you put the conference you take the conference opponents and you put them in the order of conference standings and you see who beat the higher one. Well, we are in a situation here where Texas Tech uh, already has two Big Twelve losses and they would have a third after they lose to Colorado. Kansas State already has two Big Twelve losses. They would have a third after they lose to Iowa State. So I don't know how that's decided. Like, I, I don't know if you then go to Texas Tech and Iowa State or Texas Tech and, and K-State's tiebreakers to figure out who's above the other and or or we go to the next one, which is conference uh, win percentage of conference opponents, basically conference strength of schedule. Like we could get down to that. And I don't know how that breaks out. I haven't done that math yet. If we get there week zero, week 12, 13, 14, I will do that math. Yes. But we are in a scenario where the Big 12 could be deep in the tiebreakers to allow Colorado to beat BYU for the conference championship game and go to the college football playoff. I, I the will door's say this. open. Yeah, the, the door the door has been left ajar. Iowa State, and if Kansas State wins against Iowa State at the end of the year, like then Colorado waltzes in if they yeah, win. I, I was going to say. And have you seen that schedule, it, Colorado's? Yes, I have. Now the funny part. Here's the thing: the Big 12 race is fascinating not just because of what's happening at the top and the playoff implications but what's happened at the bottom of that league because you've got Oklahoma State down there who's winless Utah's terrible and the 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 murderers row that we talked about for Colorado's schedule in November Roddy Oh it's moved aside Well now Utah not afraid at Kansas not afraid home to Oklahoma State I mean the, the pokes are garbage so now you're looking at that slate and you're like okay Colorado's got a way easier path than uh, than Iowa State, who has to deal with Farmageddon, uh, which you've been campaigning for, you've been politicking to go to that game uh, since yeah, uh, since like September. You're ready. I would love you, that. This man wants to go. He wants to ride on a that. tractor. You look good on a tractor. You looked good on that bad boy mower way back when. It was a long time. It, was, it feels like a, a, ages ago. Bro, that but was yeah. a coming out party, man. It that was, was it. That, that, was. that put you on the map. So fascinating race in the Big 12, SEC – you got elimination games this weekend. I mean, true elimination games. Uh, Georgia Ole Miss. I don't Alabama, think that's LSU. an elimination game. I think that's more of one, but I don't think you can say definitively that it's an elimination game. I think it's too early. I think it's too early. 
And we'll see tonight. We'll have a lot of questions answered tonight about with the college football playoff rankings. And there's going to be some really sort of crucial inflection points in teams that that will be that will sort of tell us how the committee is thinking. Um, so, like, w- will the SEC have, you know, two lost teams ranked above and undefeated? I, b- I believe that's the case in the in the AP poll right now. Um, that would be telling to me. Like because that undefeated, and I'm not talking about Army or whatever. Like a, right. a power five undefeated, power yeah, Indiana, four undefeated. BYU. How many one loss teams are ranked ahead of those guys? There's going to be a yeah. few. There's going to be quite a bit, actually. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I think there'll be a couple, dude. I would if if you were if you were an alien dropped on this planet from Mars, uh, and and told to analyze the season. I think Indiana is a top four team right now. I think okay. Indiana should be ranked. I think it should go Oregon one, Georgia two. Uh, and then you're in the Ohio State, Indiana, Miami discussion, and, and I think I think Ohio State's probably three, Indiana four, Miami five is how I would have it broken out. If you look at Indiana, they got a top ten defense, top ten offense. They've trailed for how long do they trail against Michigan State? Like uh, that's half a uh, half a quarter. That's the length nothing. that they've trailed all year. So when you have a team that's been that dominant against a schedule that yes is pretty soft. But when you have a team that's been that dominant See, with – go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I didn't mean to cut you off. That matters to me. I don't, has Indiana beaten a ranked team? No, but Indiana has dominated. I understand. Look, so, I, I stepped in front of the Indiana bus on Saturday. I said, you know what? I think Michigan State, East Lansing, that environment's going to be a little dicey. Give me the points. Give me the point. Give me Sparty. Give me the points. And I felt I want good you, when it was 10 nothing. So, So – the the I think the counter to Indiana like Texas is is a team that has been hyped all season long, but like has Texas hadn't beaten a ranked team. Who's Texas's best win? Actually, they have. They beat Vanderbilt. Sorry, which is which is like we should we should we should recognize like that crown is not em. a crown them. That's not that's, that's not a slight to Vanderbilt. It's it's like Vanderbilt's a good team. Like that should be counted as a as a legit ranked win. But that's the only one. They get dominated by Georgia. Statistically, they're not as good as as Indiana, I don't think. So yeah, that's fair. I mean, the 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 ranked team that they beat, Michigan, is very much not ranked uh, as we record the show. So yeah, look, valid. The other one's Miami, Roddy. I mean, look, ACC got wild over the weekend. Clemson catching that L. Miami still hasn't yeah. beaten a ranked team. They got to come to the flats on Saturday. I'm not calling for chaos. I'd love to see it, but it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, and I'd that's like the other see. thing. And 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 like when you compare Indiana and Miami, Indy, I mean Miami's offense is awesome. Um, I think it's still the number one offense in the in the country. It, uh, is, scoring, it is the number one offense. Yeah. It's the number one offense yards tied for number one in yards per play with Ole Miss. So so like that that will boost them. And yet they haven't played a ranked team, and they needed an overturned call against Virginia Tech. They needed that the the cow comeback. They needed. Um, they were the, the Duke score is misleading. Like that was a game into the I fourth. I don't mm-hmm. want to. I do. I don't want to talk about one of the worst beats of the college football season I've seen. I don't want to mm. talk about it again. Don't want to revisit it. Was Duke up eleven in the third quarter? Maybe. They did they give up a thirty-five to three run to Miami after that? They might have. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna pretend like I did not see it. Okay. Yeah. That's let's keep it smart. let's let's keep it rolling. Let's uh let's head out west, okay? Our man Alex Kirshner from Split Zone Duo, kind enough to join the program. It is early out west, Alex. Good morning. Thank you for hopping on with us. Uh big day, obviously, on, on many different levels. We got the CFP rankings coming out later tonight, which I do want to talk to you about. But Roddy and I have just been kicking around the notion of like it's November. There's four weeks left of the regular season. We kind of got a taste of it on Saturday in the Big Twelve. Like, it's going to get weird down the stretch. Like, who do you feel most comfortable about? Like, outside of, like, Oregon, who feels like they're just an absolute lock. Like, who do you have, like, faith, supreme faith in being a part of this 12-team field come December? Got pretty strong. Well, first of all, good to see you, fellas. Always a pleasure to be with you. Got pretty strong faith that the teams that you had at the beginning of the year as locks or close to it will still make it. So that's Georgia. That's Ohio State. That's Texas. I think at least those three, it is tough for me to see them missing out. Though, of course, given the nature of a Big Ten schedule, it could always happen. I also feel pretty good about Penn State, uh, despite what we just saw. 
I think that Penn State's going to have the same season they have every year, and that would be good enough for a 12 team, even though it wasn't good enough for a 14. And I, I can't believe I'm saying it, guys, but Indiana feels pretty good right now. Uh, Indiana could maybe lose two more out of three and still be there. So I think there's at least six or seven that I feel 80 plus percent will be in there. Of course, you know, the math says one of those could always fall out, but I do feel pretty good about those teams. Steven and I were just having the discussion because you said six or seven and four of them uh, were big 10 teams, which means if stuff gets crazy, it feels like like if, if bid stealers happen, a Miami loses in the ACC, a BYU loses in the in the big 12, maybe those teams get left out like that's a different discussion. But but it feels like the benefit of the doubt would go to the teams that you just mentioned and the SEC would be the one to lose some of some of the teams. Um, that are kind of on the bubble because they got a bunch of them. I mean, uh, how do you think that will go over? Like, I mean, it obviously will not be received well, and, and it's a it's a hypothetical. But but how did the SEC find itself in this situation? Well, I do think that it's probably given the way things are starting to unfold, going to be nine teams from the Big Ten in the SEC. the The two bid league that I felt best about was the ACC if Clemson had kept winning and, you know, Clemson being able to sneak in there as the 10th or the 11th after Miami winning the league. I don't know if the big 12 is going to get two teams either. I, I think the big 12 might get one team. And I, I think, I don't, I don't see a two lost big 12 team to make the yeah. point clear making it. So I do think there's room for the sec to, to get a fifth instead of the big 10, but I suspect that if the SEC only gets four teams, then Greg Sankey will will be mad and will lobby to but, prevent that from happening. So, the, so the scenario I'm talking about is the is is ACC gets let's say two, let's say SMU beats Miami in the championship. Game. Let's go, sure. come on, let's go. Give Big Twelve, like an undefeated BYU loses to Colorado. I mean, it's impossible. A big Maybe. undefeated BYU gets to Colorado, and and. and you know, they don't drop far enough. And so you're left with two from the Big 12, two from the ACC. Again, this is very hypothetical. Group of five, Notre Dame, that's six spots right there. Those other six, four of them, like the four that I feel best about, Ohio State, Oregon, Indiana, and, and Penn State. And then the SEC is going to be left with its champion and probably whoever that champion plays because after that, you're in a two-loss situation. Like that's that's yeah. dire for the SEC, I think. Yeah, the SEC winding up with only two would be well, it would be very funny. I think we all have to acknowledge that it would be pretty funny <laughs> given the way the sport has developed the past few years. I don't, right, I don't think it's impossible. I think I think there could there could be a case for that. I just I have a feeling that they're going to find a way to put in let's say it's the a two-loss Alabama that's not yeah. in the title game or let's say it's a two-loss Ole Miss that's not in the title game. I've just been on the working assumption that a two-loss SEC or Big Ten team is going to go in over a one-loss non-champ. Say that's SMU, or say that's BYU if they get beat. All kinds of possibilities about who it could be. I just have a hard time thinking that the SEC, after what we saw last year with that travesty of an Alabama over Florida State decision, is not going to be afforded some benefit of the doubt. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's not that the fix is in. It's just that I think the committee rationale says that strength of conference is paramount and they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the SEC team. I love where your head's at. I just don't see it. I think I think that yeah. the, the world where the SEC does not get a third team come hell or high water is harder, harder for me to envision than other chaotic scenarios that could come yeah. about. Yeah. I, Alex, I, I want to, I want to talk coaching for a little bit. I, I listen to split zone duo. I, I devour, I devour y'all's content to hear about, you know, who some of the worst coaches in college football are. It's about to be coach season. So that that's going to get really spicy on y'all's end. But if we're, if we're handing out an award for like best coaching job of the season, you mentioned Indiana earlier, obviously with Signetti, Roddy mentioned Colorado with coach prime. He's done three of their games this year. He's all in on the buffs, all in. Uh, and then you got the Clark Lee situation at Vanderbilt. Like I, which, look, man, I, I think I think that's the best coaching job in college football. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, who, who do you have in terms of like if we're handing out an award, your own award, Alex, for best coaching job in college football this year? Um, I'll split it into two awards. I think best program building 
on on the fly is Kurt Signetti, like in terms of roster management, the way that he put a good James Madison team in Indiana Hoosiers uniforms and just made and added an Ohio quarterback and wide receiver and just made this a good team overnight. I think that this has been the best year one portal rebuild that we've seen in the six years of the portal. I think it outstrips what Lincoln Riley did at USC in 2022. I think it outstrips basically anything. But I agree that from a week-to-week football coaching perspective, Clark Lee has been the guy this year. I, if you look at what Vanderbilt has, especially on offense, it is ridiculous that they beat Alabama. It is ridiculous that they had Texas down to an onside kick attempt in the last minute of that game. You were at that game, other... by the way. You were I was at, at the Texas-Vanderbilt game. Yeah. I was. It was fun. Like, everyone loves Diego Pavia, right? He's a fun quarterback. He It's he's cool. He's beaten Hugh Freeze three times. Rem- a memorable college player, no question about it. But he's not going to play in the NFL. It's very possible that I mean, maybe Junior Sherrill, but I, I don't know that any of Vanderbilt's wide receivers – or really just about anybody who touches the ball for Vanderbilt anywhere has a long-term future in professional football. And yet they were stunting on Alabama, throwing the ball over their head on play action and scoring touchdowns, carving them up in the passing game. They did it on, I mean, they've done this in a couple of games where you look through the course of the game and you're like, where where is the offensive production going to come from? And then they just, they find it when they need it. And obviously defensively, they're very tough. So I, I agree. I think what Clark Lee's done to make Vanderbilt a formidable SEC opponent, and one that, by the way, isn't yet completely irrelevant in that playoff conversation we were yeah. just having, it's a good is, call. is really impressive. It's a great call on them not being completely irrelevant. They are uh, on the fringes. They're hanging around, hanging around. Uh, let's stay in the SEC. Two SEC games, uh, big ones. I'm not sure if, if anybody's heard, um, but both road teams, slight favorites, Georgia at Ole Miss, uh, Alabama at LSU. Which one of these do you have a better feel for, and what is that feel? I think I have a better feel for Georgia Ole Miss. I think Georgia's going to do to Ole Miss what is always done to Ole Miss when there's an opportunity for the program to really level up to a new place in the sport. <laughs> feel very good about Georgia in that game. I don't know what to say about LSU and Alabama, actually. I, 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 I'm a little surprised that the market seems to like Alabama in that game. Uh, I don't have the spread in front of me, but as you say, they're slightly favored. It's two and a half for Alabama, as I look now. I I, I really think the Alabama situation could go either way, whereas I think what's going to happen in Oxford is that Kirby Smart is going to take Lane Kiffin's lunch, and it's going to be a bad day for Ole Miss, just like it was last year, just like it is in these spots for Ole Miss whenever they have them. Yeah. I want to go to the Big Ten and talk about some of the have-nots. You guys talk about Lincoln Riley a lot on your show. It's been a struggle for USC this year. (laughs) Apparently, they're going to change quarterbacks for this weekend's game. Not sure if that's been the problem, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. You look at USC struggles. You look at UCLA's troubles. You think there's like some 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 buyer's remorse out there? Just do we overreact to to year one? Uh, Do we think that these programs have a chance to get back into the upper echelon of this new look Big Ten moving forward? I think USC does. I don't know about UCLA. I think UCLA is here because USC is here and adding another TV market team and giving your new addition someone else to play and keeping the numbers even made sense. I don't think that UCLA and some other school would have been the two that the Big Ten added a couple summers ago before obviously Oregon and Washington came too. But I still think that USC... I was talking about this with someone actually at USC a couple weeks ago. I think it's likelier than not that USC plays in a 12-team playoff under Lincoln Riley. Hmm. I still feel that way. I don't think they're going to win a national title. I don't think he's in the realm of the elite coaches in the sport right now. But I do think better days are ahead for them just because they're a blue blood in the Big Ten and inertia eventually takes takes some effect and i just i think that they will have the kind of year sometime in the next two to three where they go 10 and 2 and they at least play in the 12 team playoff and the big 10 is happy about that yeah. let me follow up though because you're you're a southern california resident now right you live in la right. or yeah. pro, the the suburbs of 
So, like, what's the dialogue like there? Because obviously, you know, the Dodgers win a World Series. You got the Lakers. Like, it's a pro sports town. But, like, what do, pe- do people care, I guess, about what USC is going through right now? No. No. <laughs> no. You don't see you don't see people talking about this when you are in a coffee shop in L.A. Like, you have to seek it out. There are plenty right. of USC fans in L.A., but it, they are not a, a team of L.A. in a way that's anything close to the Dodgers or the Lakers. Frankly, I think I hear more about the Rams than USC. USC might be in Chargers territory in terms of how much they get talked about in this town. Uh, I think that the conversation among the tried and true Trojans in LA is sort of along the lines of what we discussed, though. I think there is extremely little chance, bordering on zero, maybe actually zero, that they would make a change after this year. It's expensive. I think they, they do believe in what he's building. I think that USC realizes that it has not been a top-flight player in player payments and collective cash. They've been pretty disorganized on that front for like three years now. So I think they've got a house to clean up that Lincoln would probably tell you is clean now. Some people would tell you it's it's not quite clean yet. And I think they're, they're still kind of doing the process. Uh, for the second year in a row in the ACC, it looks like a team that is probably not as good as its record uh, because of the schedule is going to make it to the championship game with SMU. I don't want to take that away from SMU, but like you turn the ball over six times against Duke. So uh, I can't I can't be giving you all the credit in the world and you still won that game. That being said, like this, how impressive has this season been to you? What SMU has been able to do moving up, especially on the backs of what we saw happened in the Big 12 last year to the teams that moved up there. Yeah, you just said it. You look at the results of the teams that made the group of five to power five jump a year ago, and it was pretty bad. Almost all of them, with the exception of UCF, which was okay, looked really bad. Like BYU, Houston, Cincinnati got their faces shoved in the dirt in the Big 12. They were not competitive. And I think physically they were not competitive. There is a big difference. As much as I love the G5, and I really do, I hope my bona fides there are not in question, there's a big physical difference between that level and not just the Big Ten and the SEC, but the ACC and the Big 12 as well. There's just a big level in the type of, uh, a big gap in the level of athlete and the size of the athlete that you get in those conferences. I think one of the things that helps SMU is that they've been fairly portal heavy for a little Mm -hmm. while now and they've got a lot of these guys who like played elsewhere in the power conferences and they kind of came home they have they've had power conference caliber athletes like elijah roberts the defensive end comes to mind a guy who had played at miami for a few years and been been a a relevant part of that team and goes back to smu this year it's just one example i think they had guys especially in the trenches who are accustomed to playing at that level and that has smoothed the transition for them in a way that it didn't for your Cincinnati's and your Houston's in the Big Twelve last year. Have you got Alex, have you been to their campus yet in, in Highland Park? I've been there once. Not this not since they've moved to the Dude, that ACC. place is Roddy, have you been? It's over the top. Oh, bougie. multiple times. Oh, yeah. Like it is over the top Ridiculous. bougie. Like say what you want about like country club schools. We've all seen them. Maybe we've passed through them from time to time. Bro, that SMU campus is different. Like it is, yeah. it is off the charts. Nice. I mean, Troy cool. Aikman's house is walking distance, as is Roger Staubach's. So, uh, yeah, yeah. The the neighborhood that surrounds in, SMU you're is in different. Is, you're in a different that's, zip code. That's the high rent district, bro. Oh, it, yeah. is, it is different. Tax uh, Alex, before we let you go, what are you working on? I know Split Zone, Split Zone Duo's got some stuff coming out. You guys are doing a live show in Atlanta for the Natty. You'll be in Roddy's backyard. Love that. Yep. Yep, we'll be in Atlanta with the shutdown full cast on January 18th. That's Saturday before the national championship game. Uh, Yeah, we're doing this college football podcast every week. We'd love to have you listen to it. You can find us anywhere you get podcasts. It's called Split Zone Duo. And we have bonus content at splitzoneduo.com. I'm writing for Slate. I'm emailing every weekend with Stephen Hartzell looking to get the the (laughs) finest audio from across the Learfield Network. And it always is great, by the way, that we feature on our Sunday show give people a little taste of, of what it's like to listen to a hometown radio call for this game or that game. Uh, and I'm, I'm having fun. Thank love you for having whip, me on. Love, love the, the, the recap show on Sunday. That's, that's appointment listening for me when I'm cutting grass. I know Roddy listens to it all the time too. So. Absolutely. 
We're here, Thank bro. You guys. Always. It's 30 minutes every every time. Yeah, Only hard, 30 minutes. Hard 30. 30, sometimes 45, sometimes 38. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you guys having me on, though. Always great to talk about yeah, Thanks, you. Alex. Alex Kirshner, Split Zone Duo. Check him out on Twitter at Alex underscore Kirshner. Hey, enjoy your Tuesday, man. It's just another day. All right? Just enjoy another day. Tuesday. Nothing going on. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. There you go. That's uh, that's our man, Alex Kirshner from Split Zone Duo. Uh, lots to unpack there. I, I The one thing that stood out with the playoff rankings coming up, Roddy, is that I think he's unfortunately right about the Penn State take, which is, yeah, they lost. It didn't look great. You were inside the three-yard line twice against Ohio State. You walked away with zero points. Uh, Tripp and I were in the studio for that game. We mm. were on opposite ends of the, the rooting interests. But 11-1 Penn State with a, a single-digit loss to Ohio State in four weeks is going to look pretty good. They're yeah, fine. like Add they're their fine. They'll yeah, host, they'll host the game. But can they be trusted? No, no. no really. The thing, the thing that we haven't seen with Penn State, and this is where I think the conversation is really interesting. Penn State can't beat an elite Ohio State team. They can't beat an elite Michigan team. And if you remember, we played this sound yesterday on College Sports Today six years ago after a one point loss to Ohio State. I think it was their second straight one point loss to Ohio State. James Franklin came up and said, "We're we went from a, being a good program to a great program." Uh, but now we're trying to be a go from a great program to an elite program. We just lost to an elite program. Went on this whole thing about becoming elite, 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 and they're exactly where they have been. Still very good, and my question is, is at the ceiling, but we have not seen this Penn State team against other teams that are in their weight class. There is no other team in the Big Ten that's in their weight class. They are below Ohio State and typically Michigan, but but they are they're a step below the top notch of the Big Ten. Oregon and Ohio State are in that in that right now. They're, the rest of the Big Ten is a st- is a notch below them, and so they beat everybody. Shahan Raja, they are the Mendoza line like that. They they beat all the teams below them, and they lose to all the teams above them. Not much variance. Very boring. We haven't seen that out of conference, and and so I think it'll be interesting when they play someone who's in their weight class. You know, it, it may come in the first round of the college ball playoff, depending on how the rankings shake out, but it will almost certainly come in the second round, if not above their weight class. We haven't seen that out of conference. We've seen it in bowl games, but like bowl games now, who knows? With with stakes, with things on the line, how does that shake out? That's what I'm fascinated for this year. We will get the true answer. Where is Penn State? Where do yeah, we put like, them? Like, I'll throw one out there because I saw this in a projection. Tennessee at Penn State. First Correct. Mm-hmm. Like. Who do you trust? I don't trust either team, but somebody's got to win. Okay, Someone's got to win. And, and one more thing on the Big Ten, Roddy. Everybody was talking about Ohio State before they beat Penn State. Like, hey, look, even if the Buckeyes lose here, they're not toast because they get Indiana and they've got a chance to get back into it after they beat the Hoosiers. To your point earlier about Indiana, if, I, if you dropped me in from outer space and I had to evaluate college football based on just this season, I don't think it's a given. It is not, a, it, it is not set in stone, my friend that Indiana's just going to roll over and play dead when they got to go to the horseshoe. That's no, they won't roll over team, and play man. dead. These guys can score. They can play defense. Like, they are they they are a complete football team, okay? Yeah. And say what you want about them not facing adversity because I was that guy last week. They haven't trailed in a game. They haven't had to go to a hostile environment, which they, I mean, prior to Michigan State, they, they hadn't. I heard Sorry. you talking that noise. They hadn't. Um, no, they hadn't. They trailed 10 nothing at Michigan State. It it wasn't it wasn't clicking early in the first quarter, and then what happened? They reeled off like forty three straight points, man. Yeah. yeah, I think they got a chance to upset Ohio State, and in the process, potentially knock Ohio State out of the playoff in two weeks. Just saying. no. Oh, I don't think that knocks Ohio State out. No, I also don't think they. I don't think they'll upset Ohio State. Do you think Penn State could have any trouble with Washington or? A road trip to Minnesota, who seems to Gophers are hot, Roddy. Row the boats, give you ma. Gophers. Here's here's the thing. Like great question by Trip. It is a great question. I I I have I have I have I have a problem going there in the Big Ten with Indiana or Ohio State because more than any other conference, the Big Ten has a cast system. Ohio State doesn't lose to teams not named Michigan in the regular season. Doesn't happen. Penn State doesn't lose to Minnesota's. They lose to Ohio State and Michigan. Like 
Michigan has broken that this year, but we have seen Michigan over the last 10 years is the most volatile of those three programs. They have been here before recently. So, so I, I don't know. I think, I think the haves and the have nots are so different in the big 10 in terms of skill, like offensive and defensive skill positions and even mid skill that it creates a cast system where the athletes just, just are focused in, in a few areas. Uh, whereas the sec is more volatile, still a bit of a cast system. Like people don't typically beat Alabama and Georgia, right? But it happens more frequently than Ohio state gets beat. And uh, I think that's because the distribution of, of really good players and, and particularly really great athletes is, is more widespread. Like, I, I usually call it the South Carolina problem. There was a there was a year South Carolina was terrible. They couldn't beat anybody, but they had two first round picks on defense, defensive tackle. I think it was Javon Kinlaw, if I'm not mistaken, and then like J.C. Horn at corner. And, and so like you could mess around with South Carolina and find out that them two dudes on defense go ruin your day, and and you're in you're now in a situation where you're in a dogfight because you've turned the ball over twice because Kinlaw's you know strip sack and J.C. Horn's got an interception and and you're in a battle and you're on the road at Willie Bryce and the environment's crazy. Dude, how how cool was that on Saturday night? By the way, I, I know you were traveling. But yeah, it was like, cool. Nah, that it was, was awesome. I mean, that was really like was man, that's cool. that's what makes college football so great, man. I I just look. I'm not a South Carolina fan or Homer or anything like that, but everyone's mm-hmm. talking that talk. A and M, here we go. Yeah, alone unbeaten in the but SEC. But you knew, like you knew you you could see that coming. And and here's the thing, man. There's only a few teams that that when they see that thing coming. It's only a few of them that can anchor down. Then uh, it's not Vanderbilt. There's only a few of them that can sink that, sink the hips, and resist that force of that train coming down the tracks, which will lead me to the late, like Georgia's one of them teams. You catch Georgia when they're like Kentucky is when you catch Georgia. Like okay. that's how you catch Georgia. Let, 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 you let don't me. catch Georgia when that train rolling down the tracks and they can see it from a mile away. They see that light. And that life's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Georgia don't Georgia don't play in those situations. But let's talk about Georgia, okay? Because this team, while they have won their games, while they have handled their business, okay, since the setback to Bama, notably the first half against Bama. What in the world, Roddy Jones? Because you've played the game, you talk to people who play the game, you watch film, okay? So I'm going to defer to you. You are the, I have no problem. I have no ego here saying you are the football expert on this show. Okay. What in the world is going on with Carson Beck? This guy is just handing the ball over at a concerning rate. And now you got to go to an old Miss. Uh, you got to play old Miss on the road. Old Miss is going to get after you. They're going to be in the backfield. You think that Georgia's offensive line is just going to move those guys around? It's going to be a clean pocket. I, all day. I did not say that. I didn't you said say that. They were that. going to handle the. You're, they were going to handle. I said the that pressure. they would provide more resistance than Arkansas did. Okay, fine, fine. Well, that's that's not a leap. Okay. I of also said. Will. I also said that that Ole Miss would have more success against Georgia than they did against LSU. So I'm taking both sides of this thing. Okay, the last three weeks. right down the middle. Well, well, there's a bye week in here as well. So the last three games, let me clarify. The last three games for Carson Beck, that dude has thrown eight picks. Yeah, it's not good. All right, three against Florida, three against Texas, uh, and two against Mississippi State. So I ask you, like, we know about Georgia's wide receiver issues, okay? They don't really have one. Like, they don't. They, They don't have a guy. But what's going on with Carson Beck, man? I, I think the simplest and boring and most boring thing that you can say is it doesn't seem like he's super confident. I think he's lost confidence um, and maybe trust in what he's seeing. I think the second thing is uh, his receivers aren't as good. They're not as open. And so maybe that has affected a quarterback and that could have affected the confidence and all of that. Um I, I, I this could be a guy that's feeling the pressure. Like that guy did not feel the pressure last year necessarily. Like he was sort of the he was the underdog last year. And some guys work well as the underdog. Hey, you're replacing Stetson Bennett. How are you gonna follow that up? You gotta prove yourself. Well, now he's got the Lambo and he's got the girlfriend that's famous and he's got the he you does. know he's, he's got a famous girlfriend? Yeah, yeah it's one good. of the Cavender twins. 
Did not know. Never that. heard of them. You yeah, you've I heard of the Cavender Twins, I, I, dude? They I were the have, first NIL people. I have people. heard of the Cavender Twins. I know you have. He they're from Florida, just like he is. So that makes sense. So yeah, I don't know where they're from. I Miami play. basketball player. Uh, I don't know if he's dating the Miami basketball player. One of them you is have no longer playing basketball. You educated me, Roddy Jones. I don't. I don't. I don't. Us Weekly doesn't come to my house. I know it comes to yours on a regular basis. So thank you for the update. Appreciate Haley it. and yep. Hannah. Yep. I don't know which one he's dating, but he's dating one of them. Um. So, so like, there's a lot that comes with being famous and, and being being like that, being in the spotlight. And you know, we keep bringing this back to uh, we. I feel like I keep going back to Colorado, but but the, but there's really impressive things with how they've been able to do it and how they've been able to operate. Like, say whatever you want about how they operate, they thrive in the spotlight, and not everybody does. Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter thrive in the spotlight. Not everybody does, and so. I don't know if that's it. I think all of it has sort of come together in a melting pot of him not playing well, um, whether it's the distractions or him taking his eye off the ball. Some guys don't do well with that. And, and you know, I think for guys like this now, it can help him have a better NFL career if he goes through this because he can go through the struggle at Georgia and he won't get benched and, and he could stay another year if he wanted to. And then when he gets real money, like – life life altering money generational money he knows how to operate with it and, and so this could have happened back in the day it would have happened his rookie year in the nfl and his the, the die would have been cast like carson beck's a bust but but now it happens in college and and he can kind of work through it it's well said i just you know look it's bad know, like, though, man. It's bad. You can't be turning the ball like you're too experienced to be throwing three interceptions in three games this year. Well, and, and frankly, like this was supposed to be the strength of your offense, and the last three games, it's turned into a a, a glaring issue. That going to Oxford, like I don't trust Ole Miss more than I trust Georgia, but I trust Jackson Dart more than I trust Carson Beck, and that's not some place mm-hmm. that I thought I'd be going into the the stretch run of the college football's regular season. It's funny summer. because if if you if you were to go unit by unit, like which quarterback do you trust more? Obviously Ole Miss. Which receiving core do you trust more if Trey Harris comes back? Obviously Ole Miss. Ole which, Miss. Which offensive line do you trust more? I think you trust Georgia more and that's I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Ole, Defensive Ole Miss is struggling. Defensive line might be a push, though. Defensive, defensive line, line is absolutely a pit push. I would argue that that Ole Miss's defensive line is more talented and deeper than the offense than the defensive line of Georgia. Linebacker wise, I think you're also pushing, and then secondary wise, you're going to take Georgia. Yes. Uh, although the highest rated draft pick, the highest draft pick of all of the defensive backs playing this game is probably Trey Amos from from Ole Miss. So. More than Malachi Starks? Uh, I think it's close. Like Malachi Starks, he, he projected as a first rounder. Yeah. I think You're so. looking like it's crazy. Like he's a, I mean, he's a safety, uh, I mean, I so like I'm not exactly sure. Malachi like, Starks a little bit. I mean, just because nobody throws it his way doesn't mean that that guy's not a, a lockdown defensive back. Okay. He's incredible. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I could, uh, nobody. Look, I, I I'll, I'll look up where Mel Kiper hasn't projected, but I but, got him going. I got to go in top five in my in my mock. I mean, I, not, I know the, the lock has his own mock, but I mean, he's top five in my mock. Dude, the mock not, doctor. It's not going to be uh, April. top five. He's a safety. Like those guys just don't happen. <laughs> but 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 well, so, so yeah, I take that back. <laughs> well, yeah, Malachi for, Starks, fifteen he, to the Rams. That's he's also Travis Hunter is also not a safety. Okay, so so you're you are right. Uh, that is a great correction by you. Um, but corner is a premier position and safety is not. However, you are correct. Football players are, are great and Malachi Starks. I'm glad you brought that up. So so but but unit by unit, I think you're looking at, you know, maybe 50 50. And yet. Man, is Lane Kiffin going to screw this thing up? Yeah, bingo, because I, I think Kirby Smart's going to, ha- you know, these boys are here to eat. They're not here to take pictures, Roddy. We're here to eat. <laughs> Come on, man. Dude, uh, come, whoa, whoa, Look, I, I'm sorry. Like, I don't care if you're like a Georgia hater, which Roddy graduated from the Institute of Technology. OK, I think you would qualify as a guy who, you know, doesn't always I don't want to speak for you. But, dude, the, the Kirby stuff, man, it's so good. I'm sorry. Like you mean overplayed, overblown and overrated. I just think I, I just here. think those guys clearly so respond dumb. to what Kirby is selling in that locker room. No. OK. Hey, they're not Except here responding to we're here to eat. If you need we're here to eat to get up and go play well, then what the hell are you doing? 
I, look, it's a sound. They're bite. good because they are phenomenal. They're well coached. They prepare well. They're well it's coached. A pressure yes, cooker. That matters. Where do you- when Jameis when Jameis did that, we didn't respond the same way. Jameis was eating his hand. He was turning it into us. He was turning it into alphabets. They won it's the basically they the ate thing. a W. Thank you. But but no, when Jameis does it, it's silly. But when Kirby does it, oh, let's all bow down to King Kirby. Jeez, Louise. Unbelievable. 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 You are unbelievable. Just glad we got Jameis in the show. I mean, um, nom, 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 no, that's stupid, but. Sounds like that's not what he looks like. I feel like you're disrespecting Kirby a little bit, quite frankly. I feel like you're disrespecting him a little bit. You little know bit. what? If Kirby got a we'll problem, get then Kirby we'll can come get some. I'm no, just kidding, Kirby. No, I love you. We, Kirby don't, we don't want that. No, he's, 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 he's a phenomenal coach. And look, I think it's I think the pregame stuff's a little hokey. Again, I don't love. Like, I mean, I, it's not that I don't love it. Like, those guys don't need that. Nick Saban didn't get up with the we're here to eat stuff. Like, it gets it gets the rocks off of Georgia fans, which apparently you're a closet Georgia fan. But but it's... You got me. Yeah, you got me. The team, that team doesn't need it. They are insanely well coached. They're insanely talented. And they are insanely ready for big games. And they will be ready for this Ole Miss game. My name is Stephen Hartzell, and I'm a closet Georgia Bulldogs fan. Look, I mean, God, you're, you're I feel so much better bowing at the altar of Kirby. Oh, We're here to eat. I've been holding that in for so long. Trip, do you remember what I was wearing in the Blitz Studio on Saturday? Do you want to paint the picture? For I want Rodstra? to tell people it's the ugliest shirt. Honestly, it's worth you going into your closet. Is it the and Oregon it's shirt the again? Ugliest you shirt I've ever seen week. in my life. It's not even a. It's not like a a Kelly green. Like the actual Florida Gator. It's like what a really 200-year-old alligator skin would look like. That shade of green with a little yellow mixed in, and it's got the gator print on it. It's disgusting. It is quite – like it's it's the type of shirt that like I wouldn't be allowed to wear publicly if I wanted to stay in a committed relationship with my wife. (laughs) It's – it is – it is a game day only shirt. Yep. I bust it out once a year, and every year I wear it. Florida gets smoked, and man, I like we don't need to talk about the cocktail party. We don't. We don't. Need it to again, last that. game of the season. If, if the, DJ Lagway hadn't had to get carted off the field for an injury that he'll be back from in a week, then it, it probably yeah, goes very that? different. What, yeah, like what? Like I don't want to. I don't want to beat the guy up, but it's a non-contact hamstring injury. Like why do we need? The had to car- get carted like, off. Carted off. Why? How? To me, that's a guy that's never had a hamstring, and I don't know so if he scared. has or he hasn't. I think I think what a hamstring feels weird. Like you're you're. Have you ever had one? No, I'm not an elite athlete, right? So imagine, like you know, the feeling of like the tension when you when you run. Like there's tension on the back of your hamstring. Okay. There's there's tension there. What happens when you pull is you are you're you you feel the tension, feel the tension, feel the tension, feel the tension, and then it slips. And there, it feels like there's a hole in your hamstring. Like it feels like, oh, I that like someone let go of the rope, basically. Like so, when I'm pulling, when I pull the hamstring back, like there's no the, the resistance isn't there anymore. There's something off. And if it's if it's bad enough, then you could have like a legitimate like rupture of the hamstring, and you could have like blood there, and it can be all bad. And so I've had different grades of hamstring injuries, and it is a scary thing. Um, if it's a hamstring injury that he's like doubtful to play, or, or like it's even up in the air if he's going to play this week, that dude is freaking soft. He's soft as Charmin, unbelievably soft. The, he had to get carted off the field, and he might play this week on a hamstring. To be fair, he, he went to Florida, so we know how those guys are. Okay. Soft, bro. Okay. Like unbelievably soft. Unbelievably soft. So I guess you're not doing the Florida Texas game this week. Is that safe to say, Roddy? <laughs> that is safe to say. Look, okay. I would say it to DJ Lagway's face. No, you wouldn't. No, I would. You wouldn't. Bro, stop it. I'm, I'm not afraid of some 18 year old dude who thinks who, who who thinks he's done something just because he's got money for being a big time recruit. You're soft as shit. If you if you are if they are saying you might play this week and you got carted off the field, dude, I broke an ankle and got my ass off the field. You don't lay on the freaking football field unless you are hurt. Like, if you are hurt, lay down. And if you got to go down and take a knee, that's fine. But it, I ha- the most ruptured hamstring I've ever seen in my life, the guy walked off. This dude had uh, – this is a black guy. 
dark black guy. His hamstring was a different shade of purple than I'd ever seen in my life. Like, you could see where he ruptured his hamstring. I've had a dude pull a quad so bad, look so bad, that, that like, they were debating surgery. That dude walked off the field. Walked off. This guy in one of the biggest games of his life, minor hamstring pull. Oh, uh, bring out the cart. Uh, Gator, uh, Gator so soft. Here, here's, here's and a quarterback. Like, get out of here. I wouldn't say that to his face. Bro, he's 18 years old. In the Hell moment. Out of here. In the I am moment, 35 years of age. I don't give a damn who you are. If you are soft, you are soft. In the moment, I just didn't know what happened. And I saw the replay, and I'm like, okay, non-contact. That, that, it's not a knee. It's not an ankle. It, it's clearly like a, it's a thigh. Like, it's a hamstring. But then he's laying there, and he's not. And I'm just like, okay, this is really bad. It has to be really bad because why else would the cart be on the field? I don't know what his status is for Texas on Saturday. To be well, I I give I gave him the benefit of the doubt in the moment as well. The the thing that has brought me to this point is the fact that they are not saying that he is out this week. Like if it is a question that you can play a week after pulling a hamstring, the hamstring wasn't that bad. But a hamstring is something that takes time. There's no. There's no like, hey, we'll figure out how to work there around this thing. No. Like if it is – if on Sunday or Monday they're saying, ah, there's a chance. You got carted off the – this is like Paul Pierce territory. Wow. Bring seen, out the wheelchair. Yeah. I'm seeing now they've also added a uh, hangnail to the injury report on Lagway. And so, that's – Those are tough. Appropriate. Yeah, those, those are tough. Appropriate. Yeah. Those are, Look, those it are hurts. Weird. It's scary. And if you've never had one, I can see where he would be scared by it. But like in that locker room, like if, if I had a if I had a teammate who had to get the cart taken out for him and then I saw him walking the next day, I'd be like, what was it, bro? Hamstring. Oh, so you out next week? No, no, no. I'm going to try and play. Bro, they brought out the cart. The hell you mean you go try and play? Why you need the cart then, bro? Like. I mean, my, my 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 hand is barely hanging on here. Like, you needed the cart? <laughs> Hell out of here. Well, I, I can tell you one thing, and I'll die on this hill. Brock Glenn would have walked off the field. Oh, my God, dude. I'll tell you that right now. Brock Glenn would have walked off the field. We'll see if he can honestly walk though. Out of South honestly Bend though, based Saturday. on based on what Anthony Richardson has shown in the NFL, like maybe this is how they do it. I, mean, I don't Florida. know. I, again, you're hitching your franchise wagon to a guy who's played like nine college football games. Sure. Sorry, what I'm could, tired. I got to pull what, myself out. What could go wrong? What could possibly All right. go I wrong? I if I offended DJ Lagway's family, um, at stuff. Roddy Jones twenty. I'm not, I'm not really Didn't sorry. Like that is running in football. assuming the Twitter is still functioning by the time this show airs. You know, if you're listening to it on Wednesday, I mean, the entire platform could be shut down. could be dark. Don't know. Don't know. A lot, lot going on in the world these days. But that's that's phenomenal. Didn't didn't have DJ Lagway takes on the bingo card today. But thank you, Roddy. That was that was elite. That was really sorry. Great. I don't know how we got there. But it's OK. No, it's OK. I'm getting you fired up. I'm talking about, I got, I talking I've had about plenty me of being a closet Georgia fan. And then we yeah. ended up with, you know, we got to DJ Lagway. Uh, a lot of Lock Doc, you got any stock tips for us as we head into the home stretch? Because we got to get Rodstra. He's hot. Well, gotta, gotta you got to stay hot. You guys kind of blew it all to shreds in the um, first half of the show, but I did have Colorado on there. Last week was a bad week with buying Virginia Tech. Bad timing there. Told you to mm. sell Minnesota. Bad timing I, there. I told, you, I told you about Virginia Tech. Have man. you seen the stat yeah. on Virginia Tech under Brent Pry in one score games? Have you seen this stat? No, but I've got Virginia Tech Clemson this week, so do oh, tell. Oh, so hey. the bosses were listening, huh? Love that. You were you – were, this is when I thought Virginia Tech and Clemson ago. were both going to win, and maybe that game's at night at Lane, but either way, we'll take it. So double check, the, double check this, Roddy, but I believe the stat under Brent Pry, Virginia Tech is 1-11 and in one-score games. And we're in what year three, year four of Brent Pry? Um, it is amazing because you look, you look at their season this year. Every game that's been one score, they've lost. Yeah. Every and the, and of the games they've won, they won by double digits, all of them. So you know, in close games, Syracuse obviously weren't able to come up with that one. Miami is another one. Rutgers one score. Vanderbilt one Bandy, score. Them doors. Like, yeah. You know, th then that's one of the things that you got to, like, I'm going to ask. This is a team at Virginia Tech 
that last year whooped up on the bottom part of the league. But when they get when it comes to nut cutting time, yes, they're not cutting nuts, you know, or no, maybe they're, their they're, nuts get they're cut. Getting their nuts cut. That's right. Like get their quarterback yes. back for sure. That's I, th- I thought I thought Colin Schley did a really nice job. Like obviously had the fumble to lose in the game. Yeah, yeah you need Tootin though. Tootin's the offense, man. That's the guy. Y- yeah, yeah, that would have helped. So, so like if they get Basial Tootin back and and Kyron Drones isn't back, like I'm not saying right. Colin Schley is better than Kyron Drones. It makes the offense a little bit different. But he was super decisive on the underneath stuff. He had a couple deep balls that he that he didn't miss. Um, he moved the offense, was great with his leg. He's a different runner than Kyron Drones, which I actually think helps them. Drones is big and, and fast, but they don't really need that. They need the guy on the perimeter that can make people miss a little bit. Um, I actually kind of liked what Colin Schley brought to that offense. Did you say they're going to play this game at night now? I thought it was. No, I said game. I thought that it was going to be at night when I was lobbying oh, for it last okay. week. I still take it. Like, I love it. But uh, yeah. with both of these teams at one, I thought it had a chance to be the night game. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's where in the world is Roddy Jones for week 11. He will be at uh, Lane Stadium, Blacksburg, Blacksburg. for Clemson. At you got any food wrecks Tech. for uh, Blacksburg? Or are I you done giving it to I, me I'll, after I'll be honest, If we're going to go to a college town on ID1, Blacksburg is not the place. Okay, let's be real. Just keep going up to exit 245, baby. That's where the real That's where the real football program resides in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Okay. Didn't they lose last week? They were on a bye. Nice try. Okay. Lost nice week try, before. guy. Nice Did try. they lose the week before? That, you know what? I, you know, you're going to an ACC <laughs> game on Saturday. Your boy here will be taking uh, – I'll be taking in an ACC game on Friday night. I'm not ashamed to admit Oh, no. It. They beat Southern Miss. Sorry. Oh, now, you're going to – In wake. town. Yeah, baby. Wake them up. Um, in fact – It's kind of I'm, a big I'm, spread there, too, for a game, you know. You got to think – both teams want that for a – for a chance at a bowl, I think it's a touch. Cal can't experience. win ACC games. That's so. a, that's a fact. Uh, your boy's trying. I'm, I'm actually lobbying for some field passes, so we're gonna see how that goes. You need so help? Take, Let me know. You know, I, I know. I people. don't know. I listen. Rod, I don't. Of all the, if I'm gonna call on a favor from Rodstra, it ain't gonna be for Wake <laughs> Cal. See, the thing is, night, that's the biggest favor that I can in ever front give of you, six thousand so. people. Okay, <laughs> I love you, buddy, and I think you're great. But it's the that's only favor that I could one. get. That's, that's one, not that's the, the one. one favor that I make that I could actually make. Hey man, through. you want me to make a call? You I got it. I got you. I got you. I know people, bro. I can get my own section at that game. Okay, <laughs> that's a, well, it's facts. Literally, like I can get my own sliver of the stadium where that's there will be fact. no one within a hundred yards of me, if I so chose. Friday night, in Winston Salem, Cal Wake. Let's go get you some. All right. Um. I want to get to some picks. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Trip still got the stock report. Oh, I, I want to. I want to do one one thing because I I think this is real. I think this could happen. Um, we talked a lot of Big Twelve earlier in the show, but one team that really didn't get mentioned was Cincinnati. Cincinnati, off a tough loss at Boulder. Roddy was there for that one. They had a bye week. They're favored this week. I think it's. Probably one of the best plays on the board at really? home against West Virginia. Right now, this is my top play. Like, if Whoa. you want to sneak peek at Friday show, Cincinnati's, I think, the best play on the entire board for this week, uh, favored by five. Off I don't of like by, that number. I feel like that's a little home. too rich. They're back like at home rich, against Doc. West Virginia, who, by the way, West Virginia, like 20 minutes ago, Half their starting defensive backfield is out. Their quarterback is probably out. That probably want to jump thing, on the five frankly. while while you can get it. The fact that Garrett four and a half is not right playing for West Virginia makes me like West Virginia even better. Okay, that guy but should be investigated at, for point shaving based on what Cincinnati I've seen in the last couple of weeks. Lost an absolute shootout at Texas Tech. They blew a three score lead against Pitt back in like week two. Yes, so they did. I think it's a pretty good football team. And now yep. all of a sudden they've got a chance to just flip the big 12 on its head because after this, they win this week. They've got road trips to Iowa state, then to Kansas state. They don't look so tough anymore. It's a much more, I think Cincinnati could get through this thing. Okay. And I mean, you're talking about shaking things up. That's a team that could do it. Okay. 
All right. Buy the Bearcats. Anybody we need to sell? Any stock that we're ready to dump? Are you still clinging to your Tennessee stock? When's that get dumped? Still still have a few shares. Before of Georgia. You dump still it before a, Georgia. You hold it for another week. Bro, like there's there's some teams. There's going to be some teams in the top 10 of these rankings tonight, like Penn State, Tennessee. Um, I just, like, I don't know how you can feel good about, like, yeah, like I guess this is what we just have to wrap our heads around, Roddy. Like, there's going to be teams in a 12-team field that are going to be in the playoff but have absolutely no chance of winning more than a game in that thing. You know yeah, what I mean? 100%. Happens. Yeah. yeah. We just have that's to wrap our heads happens. around it. I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just Every, you're not, you're not going to find enough teams that are like, yeah, that one can go all the way. No, it's just not enough of them out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So here's the deal. Roger, Roger was hot last week, eight and three against the spread. And for the season, I'm pulling up the cumulative stats. I mean, there's still, look, there's still work to be done. Okay. We're not all the way back, but uh, you love to build on an eight and three week. Oh God. Uh, we're still 13 games below 500 for the season, it's okay. but that's what a, that's what a two and 12 will do. Uh, way to bounce back with an eight and three. I would love to know what's on the board for week 11. Obviously we will not be going to Blacksburg because you're calling the game, but uh, we get, dude, look, Maxion Tuesday night, Sunbelt. No, we stay, we stay, we stay off that. We stay off that midweek drug. You're a huge conference USA guy. Stay off that midweek drug, man. We can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. that Well, hit, hit me with some numbers, man. I got my, I got my lines. We're ready to rock. All right. So we'll start on Saturday. Uh, Let's go first and foremost. Trip, you convinced me. Cincinnati minus, I have it at four and a half. I'm telling you right now, if if you're one of those people out there listening and you've, you know, through 10 weeks of betting on college football games, your account's empty and you don't want to reload it, you want to wait till next year, pull your car over, get some more cash in your account. Because I'm telling you right now, this line's going to be at like a touchdown. Especially after this pod drops. But it's going to be. You're going to move the line about three points on your own. Get on Cincinnati this week. College sports now does not. uh, We do not. I love how we should just pull our cars over and just. Yeah. Just get more cash. Let me just just pull some out of the sky. Let me pull some out of the car seat. Yeah, we'll yeah their own more. apps, Hartzell. There's an app. You open it up. You click deposit. It's no. probably already got your card saved for you. Do you I've know how this of, stuff I've works? I've heard of Absolutely these not. apps. Yes, I'm, I'm, I've heard about I'm just about saying these do apps. it now yeah. before this thing goes through the roof. Okay. All okay. right. I, I'm going to save this audio, and we will either play it and praise you a week from now, or there's going to be some really upset people that are coming after the doc. Looking forward to it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, if you lose your money, don't come after us. This is a yeah entertainment purposes for in- only. Entertainment purposes only. You can come after me. Just follow me on Twitter. That way, I can get some more followers. Go ahead. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, th- there's a noon game right after Gilmore Girls uh, on the CW. Mm-hmm. Syracuse is an underdog at BC. Give me the orange. La orange. Don't hate the that play. Orange. It's the orange. What What about the other noon ACC game? Any Any thoughts on how that might go down? What's the other noon? On the flats. Missing the, oh yeah, that one's on there too. Uh, give me George Tech plus the points. Jackets. What's up with Haynes King? Are we? Is that guy done? Are we shutting it down? I don't Are we going to see him again? I have no inside information there, but Georgia Tech. Miami has issues with Georgia Tech historically. Always have. Um, Always have including last year. Uh, the line is big. Um, let's look at, hold on. Let me pull up. Let me pull up these records. Miami. You got to, uh, you got to take a little peek at the Georgia. over too, don't you? I mean, uh, what's the over under? It's, it's a lot. I mean, it's 63 and a half in the, uh, wow. It's not as much of an issue as I thought. Um, so 14, 14 all time. Miami's won two of the last three Georgia tech won last year, but Georgia tech's won three of the last five. Miami won three straight from 17 to 15 and one, two, three, four, five straight from 2009 to 2013. But Georgia Tech won three straight in the mid 2000s. So it's not as it's not as uh, one sided or ish- there's not as many issues as I thought. But yeah, we'll take we'll take the jackets plus the points. We'll take the jackets. Okay. You like that or not? Doesn't matter. I mean, 
you know how I feel about the Institute of Technology. Okay. Yep. Yep. Sleeping giant of a program. Maybe they wake up on Saturday at noon. Wow. Maybe they don't. We'll find out. Yep. Uh, give me Navy minus the three at South Florida. Oh, Navy, dude. They're broken. Come on. They lost at Rice. A food. Uh, they didn't have their quarterback. Okay. Right? Okay. Like quarterback sure. didn't play? I mean, you're, you're right. So what? what is he playing in Tampa Saturday? Uh, that's my assumption. I haven't actually looked at it. Okay. <laughs> I assume he's back. All right. You don't. Uh, oh, well. I Both service that. academies at, were without their quarterbacks, and I got to be Army honest. What dub. I saw with Army without Bryson Daly is a concern. Yeah, but they got that dub. They did, but they didn't. They dubbed cover, it up, and they didn't look great in the process. W W W W W W. Give me Georgia minus the two and a half. Now we're talking. Now, now we're talk- we're picking real games here. Okay. What do you mean? They're all real games. All games matter. I mean, come on. We've been dabbling on Syracuse, BC. ACC games matter. Navy, USF. Start calling the you the A- King AC of the American. games matter. <laughs> hey, I did that. You know, I was all over that last year. Um, a little bit further down. Give me Iowa State minus the points. They're a three-point favorite at Kansas. That's a weird. That's a weird. It's a line. weird one. It's, it feels like a somebody knows something kind of deal, but is Iowa mm-hmm, State just mm-hmm. are they just not good at football anymore? I mean, you think Iowa State's going to pack it in? No, they play close games all year. They'll be fine against Kansas. They'll play another close game and they'll win by seven. That game's at Arrowhead. Just putting it out. There. Uh, I don't believe that that's true. It oh yeah, it is true. at Arrowhead. Come, Roddy, right, is listen, if there's one, I thought it was still at the one, soccer stadium. My bad. It switched. One My bad. Thing your me. boy can handle it's schedules. Okay. I, I, I know schedules. I know locations. I it's, know on times. it's on me. Sorry, it's on me. Sorry, live and learn. Um, let's keep it rolling. Give I'll me... give you a sneak peek of Friday's show trip. Army, sure. North Texas. That's on no. my board. The over? That's on my board. 64. I need to, I, I'm, I'm going to make a call to, to Coach Munkin when we wrap. Uh, I'll get Where's an Mon- update on what's going on with Daly at quarterback. But I've got Army North Texas in my sights on Friday. I, I had that one. I I don't know. I don't. I feel like I've dipped into that conference too much already. Give me Colorado minus the points at Texas Tech. Oh my mm-hmm. God, Roddy I'm Jones! In. I'm you into the, it. You are the chapter. You are the president of the suburbs of Atlanta chapter of the Colorado fan club. No, I'm not. Yes, I just you think are. they're a good football team. Colorado minus three and a hook. It's yours. Yeah. Oh, you don't just stroll into Lubbock, though. That's all I'm saying, man. You don't just waltz into that place. No, you don't just waltz into that place, but, you know, you may crip walk into it or wow. something. <laughs> Can you crip walk? Uh, I used to be able to. I haven't crip walked in forever. but I, 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 just, I cannot. I've tried. It doesn't. Hey, doesn't, doesn't look I just good. want to throw out a stat at you. I knew Texas Tech was bad at getting after the quarterback, but, like, the way you, you stop Colorado is by sacking Shador Sanders. They are the worst yeah. team in the Big 12 in sacks. Good to the know. worst the worst so with that being the case let me ask you the question how do they stop colorado not gonna uh, smoke and mirrors um magic. you're gonna smoke and mirrors shador yeah he's seen everything magic magic yeah that sounds good that I, sounds... I look, but can y'all hear me the rooster that's crowing in the background by the way is that coming through my my microphone or no i'm not when you're today. talking mm-hmm. all right because I don't want people out there thinking that I live on You a got farm. chickens? Right. We've had this discussion, man. Mm-hmm. I have 17 chickens. We've, we've not had the feelings there. We have not had this discussion. You've never hens. told me you had 17 chickens. Yes, I did. We've talked you've about never this. Told me, you've never told me you have 17 chickens. I have 16 hens. I keep rooster. track. I keep track of my friends that have chickens. Uh-huh. You were not on that list. Rooster's you've name never is Bento. We call him Bento because he's got a bent toe. True story. Very good. That's that's a kid naming if I've ever heard. We used to have more than one rooster. Uh, This past spring, they started to um, do do what roosters do in the spring, which is try to kill each other. Uh, I had to get on next door and offload two roosters. True story. Wow. (laughs) Don't know if they ended up in someone's backyard or if they ended up in a pot. How did you decide that Bento was the one that was going to stay? He was the oldest. And you want to keep the oldest? Question mark? Uh, Bento almost died at the hands, or I guess the the spurs of another rooster. Uh, I and mean, he mm. looked like it looked like the Passion of the Christ. I mean, he just oh, just covered in his own. Oh life. my gosh! 
And so, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ugh. It was an awful scene to come home to. I thought he was dead. So we had to save him. We had to nurse him back to health. And in the process, I was like, your ass, you, young rooster, out here trying to flex on old rooster, you're out of here. You're done. Can't have Keeping- this. You got rid of the young cock for the old cock. Okay. And you want to know what you want to you want to know what the you want to know what the market is like for roosters in Winston Salem? On I would imagine it's bumping. The rooster it's, trade it's, is it's, high. It's quite an interesting little subculture. Okay. I bet. It's quite a community. Because apparently you can't give away animals on Facebook. That's frowned upon. Uh so my posts kept getting taken down. They kept getting removed. It's a long story, but um, anyway, yeah, Bento's our guy. He's our alpha, and, uh, you know, he's got a flock, a harem, if you will, 16 girls that he looks after. It's your story. Well, I'm glad we finally covered this. Wow, I didn't know this about you. How many eggs are you getting with these, these chickens? Uh, well, now that the days are shorter, uh, we're probably getting down to about four to six eggs a day. But in the spring and in the summer, when it's bumping, when it's you know, when it's daylight, until you know eight get 12 14 eggs a day you're giving away eggs at that point you can't we are cook literally eggs. giving away eggs although my mother-in-law sells them at the nail salon for five bucks a dozen <laughs> no way all right that's yeah, awesome yeah yeah slang him dude she's slang him she is hey man i gotta get them hey man i gotta go down that nail salon I gotta get them eggs man only five the bucks a dozen. when i the best part is when i reach into the you know the, the fridge to open up to crack open a dozen because, you know, I would like eggs for breakfast. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's like. Sorry. I thought you didn't have to keep those in the fridge. If you they don't are... have to. They just stay longer. It's You don't have to. You don't gotcha. have to. Do you uh, also, them? I need to talk to Yaya because um, she's she ain't selling them for enough. She, go to the grocery store and see if you can get some organic eggs for five bucks a dozen. The answer so, is no. Where we are, we, we are, we have strayed. But in, in Atlanta... Like in Charleston, it's the same thing. There, there are certain towns where it's just people are willing to spend more for eggs. That, that's not the case here. I think the going rate actually here is like four bucks a dozen. Wait, There's no, no, no. So eggs. hold on. You walk in. You walk yeah, into your. Got... You walk into your local grocery store, and you buy a dozen eggs from like Happy Egg Company. You don't do it, but I want you to take a peek at the price next time oh, you're yeah. in the grocery store, and just no, let no, me know no. what it is because I feel like. I feel like that's low. I feel like that's low. Like them, them yeah, organic I mean, eggs. These are the, we're we're all we're all friends here. We should be giving them away. Frankly, like I I usually give my yeah, guys uh, a dozen eggs, and I did at the beginning of the season, but I haven't since because yeah, yeah, like stop giving away eggs. That's five dollars. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 we're in a recession. She's crushing it. Need that money. She's, we're not in a recession. Yeah, um, been. two dozen eggs at Costco for eight bucks, and What's they're. Costco? pasture raised that's what yeah. you want right that's pasteurized pasture it says pasture raised I, I know i know okay but i mean that i think that's a pretty good deal right uh it is yeah eight bucks for 24 eggs. Yeah, that's costco. The, that's costco. They, um... but here's the thing that membership it's 120 to get in the door and i don't know when the last time you went to costco roddy but they are scanning cards at the door now they're not we don't get our car scanned our card scanned now uh but i could see it coming there are card scanners at our at our costco and when i scanned my card my wife's picture popped up and i got stopped yesterday wow and i was like yeah that's my wife just so we're clear we're a family the thing is it's funny because you probably get the same awkward like yeah sure as i do when my wife's picture comes up yeah i was somewhere the other day and uh and I was like, oh, yeah, my wife played against you guys a little bit. And they were like, oh, is Destiny? I was like, no, her name is Jackie. She's the extremely tall blonde. Don't be judging me. You can judge a book by its cover. Destiny. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I was How tall? You say extremely tall. How tall are we talking? Six feet. Oh, okay. But, like, when you're walking around normal people, like, she's very tall. Yeah, to six feet people. is a that's a tall woman i would yeah. agree i've had this discussion with felder because his wife is also tall and you know you guys are used to being around athletes so you don't maybe you don't appreciate height roddy but for us plebes us normal people dude you're taller than i am 
I mean, I don't know if that's true. I mean, barely. But my point is, you're around. You have you grown up around elite athletes your whole life. You don't bat an eye when you see a six foot tall female. Most of uh, you used to bat a lot of eyes when I saw a six foot tall female. Now I don't. Baby. Only one. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, where where did we leave off? Did I say Colorado? Bento. Yeah, you took Colorado. Bento. All right, Last we took Colorado. Great. Uh, give me. Give me LSU plus the points. Ooh. Okay. Not shying away from the big games this week, Rod. Never, Schroeder. never. Did you here's, Georgia? Here's, Did we yes. already do that? I took, oh, yeah, yeah, I took Georgia. Um, here's the thing, man. Like, LSU's record at night under Brian Kelly is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I don't know exactly what it is, but to the point where, like, people are starting to bring it up. They're like, look, like, the SEC coaches. I heard you bring it up on your uh, on your Sirius XM show the other day, driving around. I was like, I was waiting for the actual stat, you know, the wins and losses. It never came. It was just oh, yeah, oh, I don't have record at night. Me. Oh, it's just all right. Let's look it's it up. Unbeatable. Ryan Kelly record. I don't know how you can pick Jalen Milrow over Garrett Nussmeyer in this game again. Like uh, Brian Kelly's that. record at Tiger Stadium at night is thirteen and zero. Okay, well there you. Go. <laughs> that's a that's pretty solid. It's pretty good. Any further questions, Your None. Honor? None. No, no. The the defense rests. I mean, and like other SEC coaches know that, and they're like, "Bro, stop giving LSU all these damn night games." Like, why do we got to play LSU at night? I know the environment. I know, all, like, stop playing LSU at night. Lane Kiffin brought it up to us. He's like, "Look, look at the look at the." Look at the record of of home teams in night games in the SEC. Look at it. He's like, oh, we can't get a night game. You you got to be Tennessee, or you got to be Alabama, or you got to be LSU. Georgia doesn't even play that many night games at Here's home. Here's the thing, though, man. Like, I I hear you. Got to be South Carolina. Then go coach somewhere else, man. Like, I don't know yeah, what to tell like you. Tallahassee. Like, quit whining. We still like, get night just, games. No, I, I understand. I understand you saying that, and I somewhat agree. However, when it's that, when the evidence is that overwhelming, I do think it is like there's something that TV people need to look at. And I would tell our bosses this because there's more opportunities to put SEC teams on at night now. Yes. ABC only- Prime is now open. And so now you can get ABC Prime, ESPN Prime, and SEC Network Prime. And if you look, at the number of times those teams are winning, the night game teams are winning, you have to make sure that the distribution of night games is even. Because if it's not, and Ole Miss is in that in that, in that that sweet spot of like, they will rarely be on mm-hmm. SEC Network because they're a rank. They're a good team. They're a brand. People like them. Lane Kiffin. So they will always be moved up. To 330. But like if they're at home. Ho- but if they're at home, then they're probably not going to be the night game because there's another night game out there that's more sexy. I so teams like Ole Miss, and I would throw Missouri into this. I would throw Kentucky gets some night games. They played Georgia. It uh, wasn't that Georgia game. Was that the night? king of the SEC yep. Network night game? Though exactly That's the difference. B- but like yes, so so like Missouri doesn't get a ton. Like Auburn right now doesn't get a ton. They're not good enough. But like now that Texas is there, Texas gets night. Ga- I just you have to distribute it evenly, and and so. You know, I think we'll look at the end of the year and look at the record of SEC teams at night. And if it's not like that's something that I'd bring up to my bosses, like, hey, are we are we I'll, putting our thumb on the scale here? I'll bring it up to Greg in a couple of weeks. OK, when we're, when well, it's we're not Greg. Top, well, I guess some of it is Greg. I'll, but. I'll, I'll bring it up. I'll be like, hey, you know, Commissioner, what? I brought this up on my podcast with Roddy. I just I like. I don't like the idea of that being such an an overwhelming um d- differentiator and thus like tv kind of being able to dictate it yeah. not kind of like hey let's put lsu at night a lot and all of a sudden lsu's undefeated at night it break out 13 and oh 13 and oh yeah it's a tough place to play at night i mean but everybody's not 13 and oh like he's better than everybody else there everybody's got a tiger like. stadium not you know what i'm saying like that's come on that's fair might be but 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 again game, but dude. again but again if if South Carolina Texas A&M was played at noon we'd have all been like ah I feel a little bit no that's a night game you go into Willie Bryce at night the scene was unbelievable because we're like and that that made us all perk up ah 
Yes. True story. No, you're not wrong. <sighs> you're not wrong. But look, there's there's only I mean, one A&M. ABC. There's one ESPN. There's one ESPN2. There's one SEC network. Like, you can't just. <laughs> LS... There's what only you one ESPN2. <laughs> That's true. That's just, there's, that's there's only one deuce. Great line. Roddy doesn't want to be on it. There's only one only deuce. Only one Ocho. Don't no, put I'm, me on the I, deuce, he says. Uh, when did I say that? I mean, don't. But when did I say that? No, it's just, I'm, I'm, you said it. You implied it. I did. Uh, but like A and M last week or two weeks ago, they played at night. Win that game at home. So right. Um, you know, I, I just think I, I think it's something that that we need to be cognizant of as a as a profession. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. Uh, I will take I will take Pitt minus seven and a half. They got they're welcoming in Virginia. Yeah, the the shine fell off Virginia pretty quick, didn't it? Yeah. Well, Virginia is a better football team um, than they have been. The loss to North Carolina wasn't good. It came on the heels of the loss to Clemson. They're kind of reeling right now, coming off a bye. But um, you know, I, I think I think Pitt should be okay. The the interesting one though, do we still call it the Holy War? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That one's interesting because. I should like BYU a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take Utah plus the points. Mm. BYU has been getting disrespected in the markets all season. I mean, all season. Yeah. What are they against the spread? I just can't. Uh, I seven can and you, one. Yeah. Like they, they, BYU they, seven and one ATS? Seven and one ATS. Yeah, but I mean, like they were a road underdog at UCF. A couple That's true. weeks ago, like they're just like the market just keeps waiting for BYU yeah, to I, I can't. crap out. You can't get on board with that one. I can't get on board with Utah right now. That's they're fair. unbackable. I mean, I'm does sorry. it? Are, are you going to? Um, I just don't want to let this game completely slide past the show. If South Carolina, Vandy. Okay, that's a that's a fun. Yeah, that's a game I, I want to see now. Yes. Do you have a um, feeling there? I don't have a good feeling there. I think I think South Carolina is the better football team. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to pick against Vandy. At home, yeah. Vandy's so, going to be ranked tonight, aren't they? They're going to be in yeah, the hole. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should be. Yeah, yeah, they should be. Like, what a time to be alive, man. Are you kidding me? What a time to be alive. They've got the second worst loss of anybody in the poll, and they will be ranked. Yes, they did lose to Georgia State, who has not sniffed a win. Since beating Vanderbilt. True story. <laughs> Were you a little worried that um I was going to South Bend there, Hartzell? Yeah, I was. And I was about to I was about to kick you out of the chat. I, really I think was. we should I think we should dive into it real quick. I, I really no. I, I don't want to. Since <laughs> since you since you brought it up, Trip. Yeah. Like North Carolina's not good at playing defense. Can we agree that that mm -hmm. is a fact? Can we establish some facts here? I want. Definitely, I want definitely look better the last two weeks. No, look, let's 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 let's. And let's, yet, what happened? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to establish. We need to establish some facts. Mm -hmm. North Carolina is bad at defense. Can we establish that as a fact? I think so. I will okay, allow hung, seventy hung on them by by James Madison. Florida State um, had a low bar to clear. On American soil, they had not scored more than 16 points. Uh, can we establish that as a fact? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, the fact that Florida State scored 11 points and had 200 yards of offense, period, against the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill over the weekend. Can, this is a new low for Florida State. Can we? Well, can we go back there? It's a new low, and this I'll year, tell you what. They only dropped uh, two spots as far as total offense in FBS rankings. They were at 131. Now they're at 133. Dude, they, they, they've got teams. They only had three spots to drop, and they dropped two of them. Exactly. So good on you guys for that. But Mike Norvell, at some point, you got to say the offense, that's your side of the ball. This can't happen. No, here's what is what has happened? What has happened it, to Tallahassee happen. is is unbelievably unacceptable. And you know, I, I don't I don't love coaching hot seat talk, but Mike Norvell will have the hottest seat Dude, in the country going into I, next year. I hang out in some of the darkest corners 
of Twitter on FSU Twitter and some of the things that are being said, it's just unthinkable from well, a this... year ago right now to, to know where we're at. Oh, and I actually have this uh, very pulled up actually. because what our, the guest Alex was talking about um, Lincoln Riley and where he belongs. He's not in the elite tier of college football coaches. So I just Googled, you know, top college football coaches. Here's a ranking from, from right before the season started. They had Kirby at one, Kalen DeBoer at two. Here's where it starts getting off the rails. Number three, Kyle Whittingham. Uh. We know what's going on right now. Number four, Dabo. Mm. Number five, Mike Norvell. Uh. How are we yeah, it has been good right now. Um, like th- I, th- the the interesting, not the inter- interesting thing, but like the 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 history of this season, and and honestly, of Mike Norvell's tenure at Florida State, is pretty remarkable, mm-hmm. because now Mike Norvell has the only the first loss in program history to an FCS school on his resume. Mm-hmm. He has the worst season in ACC history. Worst conference record in ACC history for Florida State on his resume. Um, and there's a couple other things in there as well. Like, first one and eight starts since 74. Like, there's just a lot of historical markers on the bad side for Mike Norvell. And yet, he had a 10 and three season and a 13 and 0 season. So, like, what a roller coaster for Florida State with Mike mm-hmm. Norvell. It's been it's not a roller coaster because there have been no ups. Okay. Let, the, Dude, they were 13 and 0 last year in the I'm ACC talking about right That's now. I'm talking about what have you done for me lately? This team averages oh, no. 14.7 points per game. There's one yeah. team in FBS football that averages less than that. Does anybody know what the answer is? Does anybody know who that school yes, is? Yes, I do. Kent Go State. No, Gotta be Kent it's, State. It is the Academy of Air Force. And, and, he, oh, man. Oh well, I thought it was Kent State. Anyways, here's here's the the big problem with Florida State's name being next to Kent State and you know ranked 133rd or whatever in total offense. I'm pretty sure this is like a top ten paid roster in college football. Tough. That might be. That's kind of a a, a thing that can't be ignored. So we'll have this question. We'll answer this question in the offseason. The thing is, how, how do you fix it and what amount of money will it take? Like, you will have to pay top dollar for a quarterback. I think it's pretty clear that the quarterback answer is not on the roster, which is Milrow. at this point egregious. You like, think of the amount of money that it will take to get Jalen Milrow. And then, how much money does that leave for other things? Because they're going to need, they, they could have, and I would anticipate they will have a mass exodus. And so you're going to have to bolster that entire roster. You need receivers. You need a tight end. You need uh, running backs. You need uh, offensive linemen badly. That whole offensive line is going to leave, and it's not good. So you're replacing them with guys that aren't good enough to play over the guys that aren't good um, and who are experienced. So, so you know, you, you've got issues there. Defensively, both defensive tackles are going to leave, and, and where's the help coming from? Patrick Payton's probably gone. Marvin Jones Jr. could come back. Linebacker, they have not been impactful this year, so you need help there. Corner, they've been pretty good. And, and like secondary-wise, they've been pretty good, but Azaria Thomas is going to the league. Ventrell Cypress has exhausted his his, his, uh, his eligibility. So, and, and some of those, I would imagine, some of those answers are on the roster. However, there is not a single position that it is obvious that the backup is the answer. And so what then should the expectations be? We have seen that it's been really tough to build offensive lines in the portal. It's not easy to to build defensive lines in the portal. And when you look at the places like Colorado is the biggest example of like building an offensive line through the portal, they're able to do it because they can ease. They don't care about running the football. And so they could just throw the ball until they got enough together to run the ball a little bit and the light boxes help. There's just a lot of things that that are going to go against this turning around quickly. Um, and so I'm concerned about Florida State, like long term. Mm-hmm. Florida State yeah. was a 17-point favorite against Boston College at one point this year. I mean, just look, I, 
When you make bad business decisions, you know what happens to your business? It goes under. Yeah. Sucks. It does. Tough. Oh, I don't know how we got there. Uh, I am not picking that game because I don't trust Notre Dame, Dame and I don't trust Notre, the, Notre, Notre, Notre Dame. Notre Dame's looking sure. pretty good. That's, that's how we got there. Dude, Notre Dame's a 26-point favorite and the other over-under is 42 and a half. It's not yeah, enough. Don't, don't hate it. Enough. Don't Notre hate Notre Dame. Score. Notre Dame's not going to, or sorry, Florida State is not going to score in this football game. But again, I'll tell you one thing. You didn't see any carts coming out for Brock Lynn last week it's or any point. other week. Just it's to make sure everybody knows. That. Couldn't see the Let's mental go. carts that were coming out. Uh, I want to make a couple of changes. Can I do that? Am I allowed? Uh, uh, sure. I mean, you don't have that many picks on here. What are we doing? What are we changing? I'm going to I'm gonna flip BYU Utah. You going Kooks? I'll go Kooks. Okay. The seven and one against the spread really stood out. So I looked at what Utah is. Utah has covered twice this year. I don't love it. Utah is unbackable. I know it's a rivalry game, but I know, but it feels like the right side to be on in the rivalry. I guess just not this year. If I lose this game, I'm gonna be pissed. Um, and then the other one, I let's 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 go ahead and get some Notre Dame in here, as you should. What's the number? Uh, I see it as twenty six. Twenty six. You know the other one that could be kind of interesting? Mississippi State at Tennessee. Yeah. Big number. Big number. Yeah. But look, they they got blown out by Arkansas, but prior to getting blown out by Arkansas, you know, that Texas game wasn't a walk in the park for Texas. They hung 31 on Georgia. Uh the 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 Texas A and M game was a ten point game. Give me Mississippi State plus the points. Don't hate that. You know what? That that totals really high too. I think the total. I I think the over is to play on the total. Really, uh, Mississippi State does not provide the... Mississippi State does not provide a ton of resistance. I know Tennessee is not great on offense, okay. but Mississippi State does not provide a ton of resistance, and Mississippi State can score, man. All right, but. You know, I've I've most of my season has been off this year. Yeah, but you are. You, I mean, oh my God, I'm looking at Nico's passing stats the last two months. They're bad, man. Remember when Nico know. was the bell of the ball, and I was trying to tell people like, pump the brakes. Oh, you were. That was you. Brakes. Trying to you trying to point fingers at me right now? No, I'm not pointing fingers at you. Everybody was all over Nico. And I'm not talking about Tennessee. Like, Tennessee's a good team. But everybody was all over Nico. Look at Nico. Look at Nico. Look at Nico. And I'm like, guys, Josh Heupel doesn't downshift unless he doesn't trust the quarterback. The reason he downshifted against Oklahoma, that was a canary in the coal mine. That was not That was, that was was not a, oh, we, we've got control of this game. Let's just ride it out. That's not who Josh Heupel is. He's had to do it the last two years because he hasn't trusted the quarterback. Great defense, though. Great defense at Tennessee. Right. Yep. Great and if Tennessee. they had Hendon Hooker at quarterback, they'd be the number one team in the country. Mm. Nico's going to be a good player, I think. He's got the skills. He's in the right offense. He's got to develop. But he ain't it right now. Mississippi State plus 24 on the board. Got it. Night game. It's Look, Tennessee's going to win. It's not fair. Tennessee's, Tennessee's going to win. Tennessee's getting all the night games. Tennessee's going to win. Please. You don't think they're going to win? No, of course they're going to win. But it's like, you know, I just... You're talking about Lane complaining about kick times. It just gets me triggered. That's all. You just hate Lane. Keep it on Washington State. I, I, will give, I will give the doctor credit. He called this a couple weeks ago. Watch out. Where are the Cougs going to be ranked tonight? Because if not Boise, who? Uh, Well... The Cougs are not getting in. You don't know that. Don't I do don't know make that. Make definitive mm. statements. They got to play UNLV again. They could very easily not go. Okay. You Dude. guys in these definitive statements today. Okay. <laughs> Washington State and Boise State are not competing for the same spot. I understand. I understand. Washington State is not eligible to get a group, the group of five champion spot. So they would have to be one of the top, let's say, 11 teams in the country. It ain't going to happen. Crazier things have happened. Let's just see where they're ranked tonight. Let's just see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's just see. Washington State is not getting in. By the way, Roddy, I don't know. I would not be shocked if Washington State is not ranked. I don't know what you're doing Tuesday evening. 
But if you would like to uh, hop on a, a reaction show with Wayne and I live tonight, um, that will be happening. Okay. You won't hear it. The audience won't hear it until Wednesday, but you are welcome to join. Okay. That'd be fun. I think they're ranked. There's going to be a lot going on in the world. Um, I'm not tonight, going down. So. Like, I don't go down in the rankings. Dude, Washington State's not going to be ranked. I think they're ranked. We'll see. No. They have the hundred four. They have the hundred and fourteenth defense in the country against a schedule that includes the likes of the powerhouses, Boise. Of Portland State, Texas Tech's a good team. Tell Washington's me you haven't seen John Matier play without telling me you haven't seen John Matier play. I mean, come on. I'm talking right? about the defense. I don't care about the defense. San John Jose Matier. State hung fifty two on them. Fresno State, uh, 17. Hawaii, 17. Uh, Hawaii, only 10. San Diego State, 26. But in terms of like yardage given up, 114th in the country. You could that slice Matier's hamstring off and he'd still be playing in the game. Fact. <laughs> Tough guy. I like Roger, Matier. Roger, you got any more picks? <laughs> no, just that Washington State might not be ranked. That's my only pick. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, a dozen, a dozen for Rodstra coming off an eight and three week. Let's stay hot, big fella. Let's stay hot. We're trying, man. We're trying. Uh, are you driving up to Blacksburg? That's the play. Uh, peak leaf season. Just go straight up the mountains there. I mean, that's it's not a bad drive. I've done it before from where you are. No, I'm not driving. I'm not driving up to Blackburn. Yeah, Hell no. Soft, bro. God, you're soft. It's the drive back. Like I would drive there. It's the drive back. I'm not driving back. That's all right. Not a big night driver. Uh, or early morning Sunday driver. Neither one of those. If you're listening to the show, go and vote. Just do your part. All Even right? if you're not, go if, vote. If you don't vote, you don't get to complain. That's the rule. Okay. If you don't vote, that means you didn't say your piece and you don't get to complain about what happens the next four years or beyond, okay? And while you park your car, fire up that DraftKings app. Okay. Are we oh, no. I mean, we're we're going to start moving. We don't need to promote. DraftKings is doing just fine. Sure, ESPN bet's the way to go. They, they don't or need your ESPN help either. Bet, they're any, they're any, doing, anything they're you doing want. just fine. The better, the, the better that ESPN bet does. As long as you don't mind a Canadian check, you can go on Bovada. No, okay, no but it's good. a whole company thing. Like when layoffs and all that stuff, contract season's going to be up at some point. Got ESPN it. bet. Hey, go to ESPN bet. ESPN bet.com. ESPN bet. Your place. We're cutting all this out of the bets. episode. We're cutting all this out. Or just uh, send me a DM on Twitter. I'll take we, your, I'll take that. We will be we... back on Wednesday. Wayne Cook, Phil Steele. There will be CFP reaction. Uh, hopefully the, the world will still be standing when we, uh, when we reconvene on Wednesday for the, uh, for the latest episode of CSN. Thanks to Alex Kirshner, Rodstra. Way to bring it, buddy. Enjoy Blacksburg trip. Go vote. I know you haven't yet, so go handle your business. Trip, what are you doing? Get your whoa, get whoa, your whoa, whoa, whoa! What are you talking about? I got the sticker. Never mind. He voted. Man, you can buy those in bulk on on Amazon, bro. That, <laughs> oh, that don't mean, I've seen the North Carolina stickers, and that ain't took, it. Took okay. my kid with me this morning. Ran into, well, one of them was just a Keenan Allen fan. Saw the Bears hat, and then uh, another lady inside was was an actual Bears fan. So we got okay. to moan and groan over the last couple weeks. Bears. God, Bears. Meanwhile, PFT wants uh, Eberflus. Uh, he wants Eberflus. I'm sorry, Big Cat wants Eberflus gone. Well, if we're okay. talking NFL, Dirty Birds are coming. Watch out, okay? Somebody's got to win the NFC South. Six and three. Here we go. Eber what? Eberflus and Mike Norvell would be a great uh, duo on one of the talking shows. Next be a good year. law firm, Eberflus and Norvell. Eberflus. Thank y'all for listening. Go <laughs> yeah. vote. We'll talk to everybody on Wednesday. So long. <laughs>